going off the beaten track to find solutions. The prologue is a short time start to the racing proper and gets the faster teams a dust-free ride on a long 400 k's of racing the next day as the order is settled. It's a slightly longer experiment of 70 k's, whereas most of the prologues have been in the 40 to 50 kilometer region. I'm Arnold Getz and joining me for commentary, Rob Vega. The Nissan's in a new livery with a blue trim were out first and Hannes Robler's SB Nissan Navara 4-litre growled along pretty rapidly. In car and Moore and Krobler headed off immediately. But they missed the left turn through the gate there, and the wrong slot cost valuable seconds right here for the three-time champion, Krobler. And that would have got the ears of the defending champion, Duncan Foss, perking up. He and veteran Rolf Pitchford were hurting along, pushing their Nissan Navara, aiming for the fastest clocking and a top-of-the-class move. Through the gate. Okay, right. Got to go right. And in sharp left, through gate, sharp left. Okay, there might be a stop here. Okay, no, no stop, keep going. Just follow the road. Just stay next to the fence. Kronje and Boca, national rally champions in class last year, were trying to be quick, yet to conserve the Castrol Toyota Hilux with its big four litres of grunt and the berms of Darling was devastating on car and body alike. Cronier and the stately Birkin form a yin and yang relationship. One all fiery, the other calculated and quiet. Keep and right. Keep and right. 100 big contour and then through gate. The big drop on the side, yeah, big drop. Slowly. One hundred portion and hold on the right hand side. Portion and hold right. Chris said caution, but I don't see Cronier taking his foot off. This man knows only one way, pedal to the metal. And he missed the hole too. The Ford duo of Newell Woolridge and Kony Schulthammer started off like the Clappers too, and was seventh, just 60 seconds off the pace early on, and they weren't exactly holding back. It was great that the spectators had come out in their droves to see how 4x4 should be driven and they were getting lessons from the best there is. Yep, Arnie, this is what the off-road scene is really about, going hard enough to be competitive, but also ensuring that the car would get to the end of the 400 k's of racing. Mountaineer Ivar Tollefsen and his British navigator Quinn Evans were climbing those whoop-de-doos in their Nissan Navara very well. While Christopher and Yapi Bartnost in their Castor Toyota Hilux with its distinctive look were in turn just one minute and one second behind them and they were chasing hard, giving it horns early on in the prologue of the Nissan Dealer 400. As were these fellows, the multi-talented Alfie Cox and his co-driver Henny Tersteger in the all-new Motorrad SP. The new car had a few little things they were still working on, but it didn't affect their competitiveness. Well, no, to be honest, nothing really stops Cox Rob. Not even the rough and tough of the dry, hot and humid Western Cape shrub and grub. Ditto for Bevan Bertholdt and Robin Houghton, seventh in the SB class and going exceptionally strongly. Bev is quick, fitter and stronger. And after all the research and development that the Castrol Toyota team have done, it was showing. They were just 82 seconds behind Cox and Tostierka. And Ford was a hell bent on keeping the top 10 blue and white from Tonda and Guapa in their Unifreight Ford Ranger doing just that in eighth and backing up their senior team members. Teamwork is everything. Teamwork ably demonstrated there. George and Sharon Barkhausen have taken it to the extreme and test their marriage vows in car. But this time there was no need for that. They were debuting in the Ruicon Toyota Hilux and did a sterling job of it after campaigning last year in Class E. And the 10th car in the SP class, the Micro XL dealer team Toyota 4-litre father and son Hiku and Yap de Brain. And they were ringing every bit of speed out of the Hilux. In Class D, the Raysonics team of Kutsir Labuskakhni and Johan Gerber was setting the pace. They had a scant 27-second advantage in their Nissan hardbody. 
And talking new coats, that green front end meant that the Dalmas boys, Ramon Besaidnot and Stefan Locke, had charged into view. They were holding down 29th place overall, but putting pressure on for the lead in Class D. With Class E leaders, Yanni Fisser and Jorks Leroux in their Barber Spontiato just outside the top 30, but vitally 25 ticks ahead in class. Of these guys, Thomas Rundle and Brian Roberts in the Barden Tire Services entry, the 2,4-litre engine battle was tight. In fact, there were only 12 minutes off the pace sent by the Big Bangers. The competition was tight. Still in Class E, let's go in car with the Ford boys, Jack Beckham and Lucio Santoro. Their diesel ever wanted some immediate attention, which they then stopped to give the joys of off-roading. That gave defending Class D 3-litre engine champions Cliff Weichelt and new nav Jimmy Goch a chance to scoot by in the good-looking N1 4x4 Toyota Hilux in third. And after their 70k joint, it was Scrobler and Moore who led the 4-litre brigade in the SP class by 19 seconds from teammate and defending national champ Duncan Foss, who with Pitchford was in turn 55 seconds ahead of Cronier and Birkin in the first Toyota home. Now let's join the special vehicle category. And the space frame vehicles were just a tad off the pace, set by the production vehicles, but not by much. Yep, the rough and tumble was perhaps just too much up and down with the ditches and dongas, but not for Total Motorsport Shamir Variawa and Siegfried Rousseau in that big 7-litre porter. They had a 23-second lead over big Brandon Harkis and the crafty customer Richard Leak. Their motorite Bat Spec 3 with its Big Beat Chev 6.6 .6 motor was looking menacing, and they were eating up the darling ground. Just listen to that Chevy purr. The defending champions in the class, however, Evan Hutchison and Akim Bergman head by next and were clearly in a fighting mood. The clock says 34 seconds behind at this point and the motorite team had all their days to keep contact with their stablemate. The specials have natural air conditioning, no windscreen, thus they are heavily affected by the dust. But you're welcome to ride along, just hold on, it gets a little shaky with these cars. Naim Mosaji and Rayon Budhanya here in third in the 70k prologue and their Tyrak Jimco with its Chev 5,7 litre power was an awesome sight as it jumped the humps and bumps. They meant business. Carl Hein Silvot and son Quinton had a great win last year and turned out in Screaming Canary Yellow. The Silvot Zarko Magnum LS1 with its big Chev engine stopped the clock 18 seconds behind Mosaji and Budhanya. And let's not forget about Gary Bertholdt, a newcomer Rally Suprema of Pierre Aris in the Azure Bleu Atlas Copco Porter. This porter features a rather large 7-litre Chev engine, and with a new man calling the roadbook, Bertholdt has a new lease of driving life. David and Gary White in the Ruhrcon bat, batting by and going absolutely flat out, while Johan and Etienne Besaidnot kept their Denko bat pointing in the right direction in Class P. And that's the rub here. Five in a row when a young cry with a new nav Tito Furcht in the lead in Class B by more than a minute. Class of his own, this man. And talking class in the brand new Class P. Richard Schilling and Chris Davies were going at pace in their race car with its Nissan three-litre engine. Beside note and your Honda brain right behind them, second in class B, just 83 seconds behind and trying to keep it there. The Adenko bat sounded good. And at the end of that quick tour of the Darling Surrounds to determine starting position for Saturday's racing, Variawa and Rousseau, 23 seconds ahead of Motorite's brand new duo, Harkus and Leek, with Hutchison and Bergman ready to open the throttle on race day. So the Nissan flags were flying high. After all, they were looking for title number 45 in 57 starts. The new system, the fly-by-wire throttle control, worked like a dream. Very, very good. Uh, we're very happy with the car. Uh, the car was excellent. Uh, the fly-by-wire that Lynn and them put on my car is working excellent. And uh, yeah, we did a good time and the roads was very good. Uh, John did very well on the navigation side. You know, and the route marking was very good. And I must say, yeah, it was a good trailer like for us, and hopefully tomorrow, yeah, we're going to try and uh, win it. Being first out, what would the strategy be for race day? No dust, Duncan chasing? So we'll have to go as hard as we can. Duncan is close, second to us uh, in production, and uh, I know he's going to chase. Uh, he's the current champion, and, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's not going to give the win to us uh, on a plate. I hope we can win it tomorrow.
For the Tiauta lads, there was quite a conundrum. Yes, we weren't too sure sort of how hard to push. There's a lot of contours and a lot of very bad uh, dongas, but we had a reasonable pace. We were about a minute or so behind the Nissans, but uh, it puts us in a good place for tomorrow. We're quite happy. And how does the new car feel? The new car feels a lot lighter than the previous car. The guys have put in a lot of work and it feels good. Lots of young on here as well. In the Ford enclosure, there was, as always, quite confidence, even after watching a fellow competitor, Antis Copco's Nick and Ryan Harper, do a full pirouette. It was good. It was, it was pretty fast. Fast and rough. A uh, couple of places where you could make some, some big mistakes, as I think some of the guys have. I think our teammates fallen in a hole and, and damaged the front suspension. I saw one of the specials went end over end, so a lot of things that could catch you out. We had it played a bit cautious, but we had a good time trial, no problem. Very fast. A little bit rusty after not being in the car for a, a month or two, so but no problems with the car. The route was well marked. No problems at all, so we look forward to tomorrow. I just hope the wind can, wind can keep blowing like it has today and uh, we should have a good run. The car felt good. We had a little bit of a worry with a starter motor problem, which we've had on and off the whole of last year. Uh, and it hasn't, hasn't been a problem, and now suddenly when I came to start it just now, it was a problem, so we'll see you tomorrow. But uh, we've got a plan for it, so I'm sure we'll be fine. For Kutsia Laboskartney, there were a few early cobwebs to blast out before they got the race on its Nissan hardbody pointed in the right direction. We had a fairly clean run there, you know. It was a couple of months since we lost. Uh, drive and uh, I think we were a little bit rusty in the beginning and uh, but there's some nice thick sand out there but overall a, well, a very well marked route there and uh, I think we enjoyed it thoroughly we want to look at what the times say and uh, take it from there you know tomorrow like a guy says still a long day you know we must do what the big boss Mr. Hall said go for as fast for as long as you can you know and bring it home at the end of the day otherwise it's all for nothing and then there were teams who misjudged the heaviness of the thick western cape sand Ach, die prologue was het goed begin. Die dag ook in die begin nie, ons het uh, fout op die engine, want die bakkie wil nie loop. Toe sien ons nie die sand is, maar redelijk dik. Die bakkie trek baie zwaar. En ons sien toe die ouwens voer, ons bly maar op die selle distansie en selfde met die ouwens achter ons. Toe sien ons nie, dit is maar die dik sand. Maar verder, die bakkie het goed geloop, geen moeilijkheid nie. Ons kan hem nou maar net was in berg vir morgen. En ek dink, morgen moet die ouwe maar net probeer die reis klaar maak. Dan sal jy goed doen. In the motorized camp, Brandon Harkis worked on his tan, while the team worked on the cars. But they had a fine time exploring the 70k prologue route. So we had a great time out there. Uh, first time for me and Richard Lee together. So that was a whole new combination. It was really exciting. You know, I'm, I look forward to the rest of the year with him because he's top, top man of the job. Um, we took a little bit calm uh, towards the beginning, first 10Ks. First time I've driven the car like under full race condition. So I was a little bit wary of it and you know, I didn't want to make a mess in the beginning. So I took it a little bit calm, then we got more and more into it. Unfortunately, with 18 k's to go, I got stuck behind one of the competitors. But you know, it goes like that. And uh, unfortunately, with the screamers not working and the wind wasn't in our favor, so we just decided to, well, we tried hard to pass, but you know, without doing anything stupid. And uh, it's left us a little bit off the pace, but still, second frame or wherever we might be, I'm still very happy with that and it's a very good attacking position to be in tomorrow, so I look forward to good results tomorrow. Someone who wouldn't be looking anywhere was Nick Harper. He and his son Ryan hit a massive ditch at 120 and properly broke the Atlas Copco bat. We didn't get very far. It was about 750 metres on a right turn, and then there was a 950 metres ditch. We didn't pick the ditch up on the, on the route schedule, and we hit it flat out, top here. And then... Um, Saw it too late and kicked the car up, flicked it over, landed from a heck of a high height on, on, on the back of the car, and then it fl flicked over and landed on the wheel again. Damage is too bad, we can't fix it, so uh, that's knocked us out of the race. Don't ditch us, back after this. Vehicle and asset finance from Absurd.